Good morning. Let's begin our service this morning by singing hymn number 42. Come, thou all-transforming spirit, bless the sower and the seed. Let each heart thy grace inherit. Raise the weak, the hungry feed. From the gospel, from the gospel, now supply thy people's need. Hymn number 42. Scriptural readings this morning will be given by Sharon from Plainfield. First Corinthians. And I, brethren, when I came to you, came not with excellency of speech or wisdom, declaring unto you the testimony of God. For I determined not to know anything among you save Jesus Christ. And my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the spirit and of power, that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. Howbeit we speak wisdom among them that are perfect, Yet not the wisdom of this world, nor of the princes of this world that come to naught. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, even the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the world unto our glory. As it is written, I have not seen nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. But God hath revealed them unto us by his Spirit, for the Spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of God. Now we have received not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. We will have a moment of silent prayer and then follow with the Lord's Prayer and its spiritual interpretation as given in the Christian Science textbook.
our Father, which art in heaven. Our Father, Mother, God, all harmonious. Hallowed be thy name. Adorable one. Thy kingdom come. Thy kingdom is come. Thou art ever present. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Enable us to know, as in heaven, so on earth, God is omnipotent, supreme. Give us this day our daily bread. Give us grace for today. Feed the famished affections. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And love is reflected in love. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And God leadeth us not into temptation, but delivereth us from sin, disease, and death. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. For God is infinite, all power, all life, truth, love, over all and all. Let's sing hymn number 118. Holy Spirit, light divine, shine upon this heart of mine. Kindle every high desire, cleanse my thought in thy pure fire. Hymn number 118. Welcome to the Sunday morning service of the Plainfield Christian Science Church Independent. 
We have a congregation from all over the world, and we have members participating in the service from all over the world. We also maintain a very active and rich website, plainfieldcs.com. We conduct services every Sunday morning beginning at 10 a.m. with our roundtable discussion. And we have a testimony meeting every Wednesday evening at 8.15 where you can hear testimonies of healing and lives transformed through the study and practice of Christian science. And you can listen to all of our services either on our website, on YouTube, or from your telephone through a teleconference service we provide. And I would like to uh, bring to your attention that we now have over 900 videos on YouTube of church services and songs and testimonies and all kinds of good stuff. Also, for every one of our services, we have a nursery for infants and toddlers that is very well kept and very well serviced. So bring your whole family. Also at 11 on Sundays, we have a Sunday school class for children of all ages. And that class is also available via teleconference. So if you don't live in the area, but you have a child who would like to ascend a Sunday school, please contact the church, find the number, and your child will be more than welcome. Uh, this next Saturday, we will not have a Bible study class. Uh, we are taking a break in August, but we will start in September. So if you feel inspired, sign up for a Bible study class in September and let Tom know which one you'd like to lead. We also have a new forum highlights. Florence has been busy again, and you can find that on the front page of our website. <clears throat> Everyone is welcome here, and that includes all of you who are listening and participating from around the world. We will now have the reading of a testimony from the chapter entitled Fruitage in Science and Health, which attests to the healing power obtained just by reading the Christian Science textbook. And that reading will be given by Janet from Georgia this morning. Health and Peace Gained About nine years ago, I was drawn to Christian science by a relative whose many afflictions had given place to health and harmony, and whose loving gratitude was reflected in every word and deed. The thought came to me, God, indeed, healeth all our diseases. My first reading of Science and Health was without understanding. I was full of darkness and gloom, and it was laid aside for a time. The good seed had been sown, however, and ere long the reading was resumed, and with such interest that my afflictions disappeared like mist before the morning sun. Asthma, thought to be hereditary. Neuralgia, in an aggravated form. And besides these, the tobacco and liquor habit of many years standing left me. Bless the Lord. He sent his word and healed me. For the reading of science and health brought to my consciousness the truth that makes free. S. Shellman, Georgia. The lesson sermon for this morning can be found on page 12 of the Independent Christian Science Quarterly. Subject Spirit, golden text, Isaiah. When the enemy shall come in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord shall lift up a standard against him. The responsive reading is from 1 Corinthians. 
I will pray with the Spirit, and I will pray with the understanding also. I will sing with the Spirit, and I will sing with the understanding also. Else, when thou shalt bless with the Spirit, how shall he that occupieth the room of the unlearned say Amen at thy giving of thanks, seeing he understandeth not what thou sayest? Yet in the church I had rather speak five words with my understanding that by my voice I might teach others also than 10,000 words in an unknown tongue. If therefore the whole church be come together into one place and all speak with tongues, and there come in those that are unlearned or unbelievers, will they not say that ye are mad? For God is not the author of confusion, but of peace, as in all churches of the saints. Let, Let all things be done decently and in order. Fairly from Maryland, we'll read from the Bible. The Holy Bible. Psalms. O Lord, thou hast searched me and known me. Thou knowest my down sitting and my uprising. Thou understandest my thought afar off. Thou compassest my path and my lying down, and art acquainted with all my ways. But there is not a word in my tongue, but lo, O Lord, thou knowest it altogether. Thou hast beset me behind and before, and laid thine hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is high, I cannot attain unto it. Whither shall I go from thy spirit? Or whither shall I flee from thy presence? Deuteronomy. When thou art come into the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee, thou shalt not learn to do after the abominations of those nations. Thou shalt be perfect with the Lord thy God. For these nations which thou shalt possess are condemned to observers of times and unto diviners. But as for thee, the Lord thy God hath not suffered thee so to do. The Lord thy God will raise up unto thee a prophet from the midst of thee, of thy brethren, like unto me. Unto him ye shall hearken. Matthew, and Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing every sickness and every disease among the people. And when he had called unto him his twelve disciples, he gave them power against unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all manner of sickness and all manner of disease. These twelve Jesus sent forth and commanded them, saying, Go not into the way of the Gentiles, and into any city of the Samaritans enter ye not, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And as ye go, preach, saying, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Behold, I send you forth as sheep in the midst of wolves. Be ye therefore wise as serpents and harmless 
as doves. Take no thought how or what ye shall speak, for it shall be given you in that same hour what ye shall speak. For it is not ye that speak, but the Spirit of your Father which speaketh in you. Then the Pharisees went out and held a council against him, how they might destroy him. But when Jesus knew it, he withdrew himself from thence, and great multitudes followed him, and he healed them all. But when the Pharisees heard it, they said, This fellow doth not cast out devils, but by Beelzebub, the prince of the devils. And Jesus knew their thoughts and said unto them, O generation of vipers, how can ye, being evil, speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaketh. A good man out of the good treasure of the heart bringeth forth good things. And an evil man out of the evil treasure bringeth forth evil things. But I say unto you that every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give account thereof in the day of judgment. For by thy words thou shalt be justified, and by thy words thou shalt be condemned. Second Timothy. Of these things put them in remembrance, charging them before the Lord that they strive not about words to no profit but to the subverting of the hearers. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. But shun profane and vain babbling for they will increase unto more ungodliness. If a man therefore purge himself from these, he shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified, and meet for the master's use, and prepared unto every good work. But foolish and unlearned questions avoid knowing that they do gender strife. And the servant of the Lord must not strive, but be gentle unto all men, apt to teach, patient, in meekness instructing those that oppose themselves, if God peradventure will give them repentance to the acknowledging of the truth, and that they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil, who are taken captive by him at his will. Second Corinthians. How shall not the ministration of the Spirit be rather glorious? Seeing then that we have such hope, we use great plainness of speech. Now the Lord is that Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. But we all, with open face beholding as in a glass, the glory of the Lord, are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. We will now hear from Florence, from Georgia. I will now read correlative passages from our textbook, Science and Health with Key to the Scriptures, by Mary Baker Eddy. The starting point of divine science is that God, Spirit, is all in all, and that there is no other might nor mind 
that God is love and therefore he is divine principle. To grasp the reality and order of being in its science, you must begin by reckoning God as the divine principle of all that really is. Spirit, life, truth, love, combine as one and are the scriptural names for God. All substance, intelligence, wisdom, being, immortality, cause and effect belong to God. These are his attributes, the eternal manifestations of the infinite divine principle love. No wisdom is wise but his wisdom. No truth is true. No love is lovely. No life is life but the divine. No good is, but the good God bestows. To reach the heights of Christian science, man must live in obedience to its divine principle. To develop the full might of this science, the discords of corporeal sense must yield to the harmony of spiritual sense, even as the science of music corrects false tones and gives sweet concord to sound. The question, what is truth, is answered by demonstration, by healing both disease and sin. And this demonstration shows that Christian healing confers the most health and makes the best men. Spirit, God, is heard when the senses are silent. We are all capable of more than we do. The influence or action of soul confers a freedom which explains the phenomena of improvisation and the fervor of untutored lips. Eloquence re-echoes the strains of truth and love. It is due to inspiration rather than to erudition. It shows the possibilities derived from divine mind. Prayer cannot change the unalterable truth, nor can prayer alone give us an understanding of truth. But prayer, coupled with a fervent habitual desire to know and do the will of God, will bring us into all truth. Such a desire has little need of audible expression. It is best expressed in thought and in life. What can be the standard of good, of spirit, of life, or of truth if they produce their opposites, such as evil, matter, error, and death? God could never impart an element of evil and man possess nothing which he does not derive from God. How then has man a basis for wrongdoing? Whence does he obtain the propensity or power to do evil? Has spirit resigned to matter the government of the universe? The Christ was the spirit which Jesus implied in his own statement, I am the way, the truth, and the life. I and my Father are one. This Christ or divinity of the man Jesus was his divine nature, the godliness which animated him. Divine truth, life, and love gave Jesus authority over sin, sickness, and death. His mission was to reveal the science of celestial being, to prove what God is and what he does for man. Jesus established what he said by demonstration. 
thus making his acts of higher importance than his words. He proved what he taught. This is the science of Christianity. Jesus proved the principle which heals the sick and casts out error to be divine. Few, however, except his students understood in the least his teachings and their glorious proofs, namely that life, truth, and love, the principle of this unacknowledged science, destroy all error, evil, disease, and death. from love and from the light and harmony which are the abode of spirit, only reflections of good can come. All things beautiful and harmless are ideas of mind. Mind creates and multiplies them, and the product must be mental. Our master cast out devils, evils, and healed the sick. It should be said of his followers also that they cast fear and all evil out of themselves and others and heal the sick. God will heal the sick through man whenever man is governed by God. Truth cast out error now as surely as it did 19 centuries ago. All of truth is not understood. Hence, its healing power is not fully demonstrated. Human codes, scholastic theology, material medicine, and hygiene set up faith and spiritual understanding. Divine science rents ascended these fetters, and man's birthright of soul allegiance to his maker asserts itself. As vapor melts before the sun, so evil would vanish before the reality of good. One must hide the other. How important, then, to choose good as the reality Man is tributary to God, spirit, and to nothing else. God's being is infinity, freedom, harmony, and boundless bliss. Emerge gently from matter into spirit. Think not to thwart the spiritual ultimate of all things, but come naturally into spirit through better health and morals, and as a result of spiritual growth. God made man free. Paul said, I was free born. All men should be free. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Love and truth make free but evil and error lead into captivity. Christian science raises the standard of liberty and cries, follow me, escape from the bondage of sickness, sin, and death. Jesus marked out the way. Citizens of the world, accept the glorious liberty of the children of God and be free. This is your divine right. The illusion of material sense, nor divine law, has bound you, entangled your free limbs, crippled your capacities, enfeebled your body, and defaced the tablet of your being. Spirit is God, and man is his image and likeness. Therefore, man is not material, he is spiritual.
we will have a moment of silent prayer for our world. Let us sing hymn number 298. The words of this hymn are by Mary Baker Eddy. Saw ye my Savior, heard ye the glad sound, felt ye the power of the word? Twas the truth that made us free and was found by you and me in the life and the love of our Lord. Hymn number 298.
Our chorus selection requires a brief introduction. As you all know, Peter Kidd, our music, former music director, moved to California, and our current music director, Faith, is taking a well-deserved vacation day today. However, as many of you know, Peter and Faith have been recording an album of 14 songs written by Peter and originally sung right here in our church on Sunday mornings. Well, that album has been uh, completed. It has been professionally recorded with an orchestra and it was released three days ago and it's available on Amazon for purchase and we are going to have a treat this morning and we are going to hear one of those songs from that finished album. So we will now hear Blow Winds of God by Peter Kidd. and purify corruption receives the destruction deserved and God's likeness is preserved blow, blow winds of God fans of flames to burn the chest consume the dross and right here. 
Let's sing hymn number 88. Gracious Spirit, dwell with me. I myself would gracious be, and with words that help and heal, would thy life in mine reveal. And with actions bold and meek, Christ's own gracious Spirit speak. Hymn number 88. from the Christian Science textbook, The Scientific Statement of Being and the Correlative Passages from 1 John, 3rd Chapter. There is no life, truth, intelligence, nor substance in matter. All is infinite mind and its infinite manifestation, for God is all in all. Spirit is immortal truth. Matter is mortal error. Spirit is the real and eternal. Matter is the unreal and temporal. Spirit is God, and man is his image and likeness. Therefore, man is not material. He is spiritual. Behold, what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not. Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And every man that hath this hope in him purifieth himself, even as he is pure. Finally, brethren, be perfect, be of good comfort, 
be of one mind, live in peace, and the God of love and peace shall be with you. Amen.